Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Yahuwah Elohim. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for Christ being here this day. Thank you for your love, mercy, and grace. Thank you for you being our Elohim. Thank you. Oh, we have so much to be thankful for. Because uh, we could have been dead in our graves on a cooling board in the hospital, but we're here today. Thank you for giving us another opportunity to serve you, to serve you with all our heart, mind, and soul, helping us to be obedient to you, help us to walk line by line and precept upon precept in your word and in your truth. We thank you, you good Elohim. Oh, because you are wonderful, 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 wonderful Elohim. And we know that there's no other Elohim besides you. You're the one and true Elohim that ever is, ever will be, and ever was. There is no other. We thank you. We thank you for giving us this chance to make it into your kingdom, spend eternity with you. And we thank you. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. I can't say thank you enough for how wonderful and how loving of Elohim that you are, Elohim that you are. I thank you, you Lord. And give you the praise and give you the glory. Thank you for my Isha. Thank you for the group man to have such a wonderful woman of yours, a wonderful woman of Elohim by my side. And I thank you for her, you Lord. Thank you. Thank you for our viewers. We'll be on later on. And I thank you, you Lord. In the most God's name, you sure how I'm say, do say Amen. Thank you, you Lord. We're going to your. Helen, your Helen 31, and today's stuff is give up the strange Elohim. In other words, give up those strange gods, give up those idols, those things that are not, they're not God, can't be God, because we only have one, in that, and he's in the Shemayan above us. He's our creator. He's the only one. He created everything. He created the Shemayan, which is the heavens and the earth and everything that's in it. He did. Hallelujah. And he spoke a word and it was done. And I thank him. We need to give him the thanks and we need to give him the glory. I thank him. So, that's today's subject. Yeah. Also, I'd like to give honor to my Israel. I give honor to her. Rook, man, have such a wonderful again. Have such a wonderful woman, Elohim, by my side. Give honor to your late mother and sister Hattie and all our viewers today. And we're going to go ahead on and get started in your Helen 31 and 1. Those of you who have a seat for Jubilees 31. He says, And on the new moon of the months, Yehka spoke to all the people of his house, saying, Purify yourself and change your garments and let us arise and go up to Bethel. Where I vowed a vow to him on the day when I fled from the face of Esau, my brother, because he has been with me and brought me into the land in peace and put you away the strange Elohim that are among you. This is Jacob. And we sound on him that he had made a vow unto Yahuwah, Elohim, and he wanted to keep this vow. Because when we make a vow to Yahuwah, when we make a vow to anybody, when we make a promise, we're supposed to keep that promise. Amen. I don't care if it's to a child or whatever not, but we're supposed to keep that promise. How much more so when we make a promise to Elohim that we keep our promise. That's right. Because he's going if he says that he's going to do something for us, you can be guaranteed that he's going to keep it. He's going to do what he says he's going to do. He's not going to go up there and go back on his word. He's going to keep it. See? And we need to have the same like mind and keeping our vows and whatever we say is to him. But notice what he told him, he said, purify yourself. In other words, get rid of all the sinfulness. Bathe yourself, cleanse yourself, cleanse your hearts, cleanse your mind also. You know, purify yourself. 
Have your mind set on serving Yahuwah Elohim with all our heart, all our mind, and all of our soul. Purify ourselves, cleansing, purging. You know, let that purge come in, you know, and purge all that vileness and evilness and dirtiness that's in us. Let it, be, let it come out of us. Let it get yes. out of us, you know. And that's what we need to do. In fact, not only should we do that when we come before you heard of him, we need to do that every every week, every day. We need to do that. Get that stuff out of us. You know, cleanse ourselves every day. Purge ourselves every day of our sinful and wicked nature. Cleanse ourselves. You know, have our mindset on serving you who of him with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul. Cleansing, you know. Making sure to remember who we're serving and get rid of all the strange things that, that are uh, stopping us from serving you who are Elohim of all our heart. You know, because nowadays people put other things before you who are Elohim. It was our job. That's a strange Elohim. Elohai. Yes. That's a strange Elohai because you're putting something before you who are Elohim. You think that your job is more important than serving Yahuwah Elohim. That's a strange Elohim. He's with our children, our spouses, money. Whatever we put before Yahuwah Elohim is a strange Elohim. Yes. And so we need to stop doing that. Let's get rid of these type of things. Hallelujah. If, if, if the job calls us to serve it before we serve Yahuwah Elohim, then that's the wrong job for us. If our wives and our husbands are, are, are think that they're more important uh, than you who are him, then they are of the wrong mindset. And you gotta let them know that nothing comes before you serving Yahuwah Elohim. Yahuwah Elohim has gotta be first in all things. You say, Well, I gotta make this money, I need this and I need that. Our needs are not more important than Yahuwah Elohim. Amen. Nothing comes before him. And so we don't we don't have start making strange Elohims. Okay. So we want to make sure that we were on the proper track. He says, I fled when he fled from the face of Esau, he had ran from Esau and had made this vow. He made a vow, that's what a vow he made, he said, I'll give you a tenth, if you're going to do this with me, I'll give you a tenth of all that I have. I, I, I'm going to serve you with all my heart. It was a promise that he had made. He said, and all my people, all my children, and all that, I'll have them to serve you and to know of you. And so he said, I'm going to keep this vow. And so you got to get rid of all that that is strange and everything. Thank you, Yahuwah. And number two, he says, and they gave up the strange Elohai, and that which was in their ears, and which was on their necks, and the teraphim which Rachel stole from Laban, her father, she gave holy to Yehka. So it came out of what the earrings, it came out of the necklace, that's the jewelry and stuff like that. But you want to say, why do people... Uh, you who are people are not wearing jewelry and stuff like that. You don't wear earrings. You don't wear the makeup. They, they don't wear the necklaces. Okay? They come out all that stuff. You who it takes us out of all that stuff because we're serving Him. You don't want to make a. You know, I know a lot of people say, "Well, I wear a cross around saying that I'm a Christian. I wear a cross. Well, that's 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 a, a, a necklace. That's a chain. There's no power in that cross. And you who did not die on the cross." He got upon a torture state for our sake. He had committed no sins. He had committed no evil. He got upon a torture state. So why you put him on the cross and say that he was on the cross? He was nailed to a torture state. Hallelujah. He says, And he burnt and broke them in pieces and destroyed them and hid them under an oak, which is in the land of Shechem. He destroyed all those false things. He took the earrings, he took the necklaces, and the false uh, Elohim, he took them, and he broke them up, he burned them up, and then he buried that stuff under an oak tree in Shechem. 
anything. Let us bury these false other highs that we're caring about. It. Let's bury, let's destroy them. You know, Amen. let's get them out of our lives. Anything that's not uh, uh, pleasing to your hood of him, let's get it out of our lives. If yes. that one-eyed demon is uh, stopping you from serving Yahuwah Elohim, and that's a false Elohim, then you need to get rid of that one-eyed demon. I'm talking about that television set. If it's cell phones, games, whatever stopping you from serving Yahuwah Elohim, then you got to get rid of it. It's got to be gotten rid of it. If it's hindering you, then you know that it is a false Elohim. And so you gotta get what? You gotta get rid of it. Gotta stop. And let us serve you who are him with what? All our heart, all our mind, and all of our soul. Thank you, Yahuwah. And he went up on the new moon of the seventh month to build El. And he built an altar in the place where he had slept. And he set up a pillar there. And he sent word to his father. Yes, yet to come to him to his sacrifice and to his mother, Rachel. And Yishak said, Let my son Jacob come and let me see him before I die. And Jacob went to his father, Yishak, and to his mother, Rachel, to the house of his father, Abraham, and he took two of his sons with him, Levi and Yehuda. And he came to his father, Yishak, and to his mother, Rechab. And Rechab came from the tower to the front of it to kiss Yechab and embrace him. For her real eye had revived when she heard, Behold, Yechab, your son, has come. And she kissed him. It had been a long time since she had seen her son and her spirit. Her reaction was revived. She was happy. She was joyous yes. to see her son once again alive and doing well for himself. His father was more than happy, more than pleased because he wanted to go down and see his son. He wanted to hug and kiss his son again. Yes. See, that's what we're supposed to be having joy about seeing our family members, seeing our family, seeing our children, having joy. The children seeing their parents having joy. Not with sadness, not with meanness of heart, not oh being tormented. Oh, I gotta see mama. I gotta see daddy. Oh, I gotta see this child. I gotta see that child. Oh, I don't want to see him. Don't we shouldn't be like that. I pray we never get like that. Amen. But the family has still that we keep on saying time and time again. The family is so dysfunctional that they don't know each other. People adopting other fa uh, 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 other people for their family members. Oh, this this person who like this ministry, this stranger is now your sister, your blood sister, your blood brother, and all this type of stuff. Which is fine in one way, but when you deny your true brothers and sisters, then it's wrong. Because that's an evil there. Yes, it is. There's a weakness there. Yes, you separate yourself from your family. You know, you say, well, I'm building a family. What about your natural family, the family that you're born into? Well, they did this and they did that. Well, where is the forgiveness of our hearts at them when we're saying these type of things? We got to have forgiveness. Because if we don't forgive, then Yahuwah is not going to forgive us of our crimes, of our sins, and of our iniquities. We got to learn to have what a forgiving heart. I'm in. That's a strange Elohai also. Hallelujah. Thank you. He says, number eight, excuse me, number seven, and she saw his two sons, and she recognized them and said to him, Are these your sons, my son? And she embraced them and kissed them, and baruch them, saying, If you shall, in you shall the seed of Abraham become illustrious, and you shall prove a baruch on the earth. When she saw her grandchildren, when she saw Yitzchak, 
Jacob's children, she knew her grandchildren. She recognized them and knew that they were going to be a Baruch what, to all the earth, to all the nations. Because this is what the seed of Abraham, the blessing was going to fall on uh, to them. Because they were walking in the ways of Yahuwah Elohim. They were doing the commandments. They were doing the statutes. They were doing the law. They were being raised. They were being taught the ways. And they were getting rid of what? All of the strange Elohites. They were yes. getting rid of all of them. Yes. They were putting them aside. Everything that was displeasing unto Yahuwah Elohim, they were what? Putting it aside. Yes. They were not doing it anymore. Thank you, Yahuwah. And that's what we need to do in our lives. Anything that's displeasing to Yahuwah Elohim, let's, let us get, what, get rid of it. Let us destroy it. Thank you, Yahuwah. And Yechah went to Yeshak, his father, to number eight, to the chamber where he lay. And his two sons were with him. And he looked, took the hand of his father, and stooping down, he kissed him. And Yeshak clung to the neck of Yechah, his son, and wept upon his neck. He was so happy to see his son. Yes. He was so joyous. He got a chance to see his son before he had died. That he just wept and cried tears on Yechah's neck. Thank you, Yehud. Thank you. And Manai, and the darkness left the eyes of Yeshak, and he saw the two sons of Yechah and Levi, and he said, Are these your sons, my son? For they are like you. And he said unto him, that they are truly his sons, and you have truly seen that they are truly my sons. He wanted to know these are truly your grandchildren. These are truly your sons. These are the ones that the blessings of Abraham was going to fall upon. He wanted to realize that. As a Baruch, when you're able to see the next generation, as Baruch, when you can see that they are going to be Baruch, that they are going to be blessings to people, that they're going in the right path. When we look upon our children in the next generation, we're raising them to what become citizens of Yahuwah Elohim, of the world, to have love, to have care for other people, to have compassion, to show them, teach them the right way. See, most of the time now, people are only concerned is about money. Oh, how much money you can make. Uh, once you become a doctor, once you become a teacher, once you become uh, a, a lawyer, once you become an engineer, and once you have these jobs that are making a lot of money but not caring about your soul. I want our children to be saved. I want our children to be delivered. Oh, I want our children yeah. to stop sinning. I want them to stop walking in wickedness. I want them to have love in their heart for Hallelujah. their fellow brothers and yeah. sisters. I want them to have love for their own natural brothers and sisters. Yes. I want them to have the peace and joy of knowing Yahushua Hamaseh, who is the salvation, the Yeshua of our lives. Yes. Well, that's what I wanted to know, for they can stay out of that burning hell. Because you can have a, be a lawyer, you can be a doctor, you can be making all the money in the world, you can be a movie star, and have all the money, have all the riches, and all the cares of this world, but you die, and you end up going to that burning hell. What good is that? And all these materialistic things that people are coveting, that they forget that this stuff is going to be burned up in the last days, all of it. The house is going to be burned up. The magnificent buildings of the churches are called out of something. They're going to be burned up. Everything is going to be burned up. Your cars, your vehicles, they're going to be what all burned up, going to be Man. destroyed in the fire. So what good is it to go up there and put all your hope in strange Elohim? Because those are strange Elohim's because you, got, you want these materialistic things. And you trust in the materialistic things of this world than you more than you do and you're sure how I'm going to say it. There's something wrong with that. 
And we got to realize that and see it and understand that we should be what? walking a different way. We should be walking hand in hand with our one and only true Elohim that there is. That's what we're supposed to be putting our trust and faith in, our Creator. Thank you, Yahuwah. And number 11 he says, And they came near him, and he turned and kissed them, and embraced them both together. And the ark of prophecy came down into his mouth, and he took Levi by his hand, and Yehuda by his left, by his right hand, excuse me. And he came down into his mouth, and he took Levi by his right hand, and Yehuda by his left. And he turned to Levi first, and began to Baruch him first, and said unto him, The Elohim of all, the very Yahuwah of all the ages, Baruch you, blesses you, the Bible says, and your children throughout all the ages. And may Yahuwah give to you and to your seed greatness and great glory, and cause you and your seed from among all flesh to approach him to serve in his sanctuary as the angels of the presence and as the Kadash ones, even as they shall be shall the seed of your sons be for glory and greatness of Kadash and of holiness, and may he make them great unto all the ages. So we see that the Levites, the Livium, did not just come uh, priest by accident. They became priests because the root, the blessings of the Father was spoken unto them, the priesthood was spoken unto them. The root. Hallelujah. Even before they became a tribe, even before they became a nation, yes, they were what Baruch. You see, that's what we're saying now that we got to go up there and call and Baruch our children and to greatness and to the things that are pleasing to Yahuwah Elohim. We got to speak Baruch. We got to speak blessings upon our children, yes. upon your children, upon their children. Yes. See, we got to speak it, but we got to have a life. We got to be living a life to be in a position to speak such things upon our children and to our children. Speaking Baruch. See. But see, we got to be in a position to do such. Thank you, Yehu. Number 15. And they shall be judges and princes and chiefs of all the seeds of the sons of Yechah. They shall speak the word of Yahuwah in righteousness. And see, that's what the priesthood is supposed to be about. That's what the ministries are supposed to be about. That we're supposed to speak the words of Yahuwah in what? In righteousness, in truth. Not being found to be liars, not found to be thieves, not found to be homosexuals, not found to be adulterers or lusters or fornicators, not to be sinners. And not, in other words, we're not to be committing sins intentionally. Hallelujah. And we should be living such a life that we are an example to the people. I thank you, who are. See? He spoke this unto the children of Levi, to Levi himself. And he says, And they shall declare my ways to Yehekah and my ways to Yazareel. The Baruch of Yehuda shall be given in their mouth to Baruch all the seeds of the beloved. See, it's supposed to be in our mouth. Yes. To Baruch what? The people. To root the children of Israel, to speak brooks, blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Hallelujah. See, 
But again, we're supposed to be what? Living a life. That's right. So we can. See, if you're not living a life, you're not in a position to speak such things. Amen. Thank you, Yahuwah. He says, Your mother had called your name Levi and justly, for she's called your name. You shall be joined to Yahuwah and be the companion of all the sons of Jacob, and his table be yours, and do you and your sons eat thereof, and may your table be full unto all generations, and your food fill not unto all the ages. And let all who hate you fall down before you, and let all your adversaries be rooted out and perish, and be baruch. He that baruchs you, and baruch be he that baruchs you, and curse be every nation that curses you. See, every nation that curses the priesthood. See, I know a lot of times say whoever curses Israel, but everyone that curses the priesthood will be cursed. And everyone that blesses the priesthood or Baruch's the priesthood will be Baruch. And I thank you, Hood, for that. I know we said something that will help us make it to the kingdom of Yahuwah Elohim. Be Baruch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hmm.